All right. So hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Nikita Vizniak with the amazing Tanya McDonald. And today we are going to be going through a cadaver prep course, talking about some of the key things that you might want to be aware of when you are coming into our lab or sharing this experience with us and our amazing donors. So we'll go ahead to our screen share here right away and walk everybody through it. So as you know from the ProHealth website and all the books that we write, we're basically focusing on anatomy as the foundation for what we do, working our way towards assessment and ultimately the actions that'll give the best outcomes for the people that we interact with. And this experience is one of those core foundations that's really gonna help you get that, get the most out of it. So click ahead. This will be an amazing experience that many of your peers have not had the privilege of going through this process. <laughs> Some of the schools are now incorporating cadaver lab time into their curriculums, but not all of them do. And some of them, it's uh, optional. So if you have an opportunity, I can't, uh, I can't recommend strongly enough that you take it. Yeah, even if you're just on the fence about it a little bit, definitely come out. You'll get to see a world-class experience with amazing instructors. And the actual instructors are the donors, not us. We are facilitators to help you grasp whatever you're going to grasp out of the entire process. Now, this image right here is one of the bigger ones that we've done in the past. What we tend to focus on now are more smaller group type dissections. But this is uh, an example of, you know, a group of like 50 plus people that were down with us one time. All right, let's go through the process. A couple of key things that you should be aware of as far as attire and behavior expectations. So I'll take the attire and give some of the behavior stuff over to Ton here. Okay, so number one, you definitely want to wear closed toed shoes. The chances of anything spilling or anything like that is extremely low, but you do want to have closed toed shoes. We will provide you with lab coats as part of the process. And you may want to wear clothes like I'm wearing scrubs right now. Let me just pull these out. Bright colors are always nice. You gotta have, you gotta have a little bit of heart here. Okay. Black. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing is being engaged and on time. And I don't know, Tom, if you want to talk more about this. Depending on the facilities that we're using, it can be critical for you to be there on time because we don't want to be disrupting other people who work in the facilities. So it's a real respect thing. Sometimes in the classroom, it can be a little loosey-goosey. Maybe you can come in late and it's no big deal. But with the cadaver lab, it's a limited opportunity and you really want to be there for the full of yeah, absolutely. And the next thing would be no pictures, no phones or anything like that. It's It's a distraction and... Out of respect for the donors, we are not permitted to take any type of images or anything like that unless we have special permission, in which case we have to deal with all that process. So just to keep it simple, to give you your ultimate focus and best experience, no phones, no pictures. Can't I just take one picture, Dr. Nick? This is really amazing. I'm yeah. never going to see it again. <laughs> I know. I want to show somebody this and they're not here right now. Yeah, I'm sorry. We just cannot do that. So no images are allowed unless we have special permission and we just can't do that in general. So. Okay. All right. Be respectful of the donors and the working environment. Tanya kind of already hit on this, but the key thing is depending on which location that we're actually at, we want to make sure that we are valuing this gift. And it is a true gift of these donors giving us their last part of their part of their, of their body here on earth for us to learn from, and also being conscientious of the environment that we're working in. I cannot stress it enough. If we are in a lab shared with other people, you definitely have to be respectful of everyone in that space. That doesn't mean that you have to check your sense of humor at the door and that this is completely somber and a downer because it's not, but you can be light and humorous yeah. and respectful. Yeah. Case in point. Yeah. You'll see this all the time. Like if you see any of our videos on our website that we have of these processes, you'll see people are laughing in the background all the time. So that makes for a better outcome. And ultimately, one of the things that you could do to help prepare yourself would actually be just to go onto YouTube and watch some cadaver dissections. That'll give you a better idea of the process and make it not so foreign to you if you've not been a part of this process before. All right, next slide. So academic prep, there's not really too much that you can do here. You're going to be amazed at how different things are than the way you learned them in the textbook and how they actually look in three-dimensional anatomy on a donor. This will be mainly experiential learning where we're connecting the dots for you. You're looking at the 3D issues, the interconnection of tissues and anatomical variations. One thing I might add though, is that list, right? You're always about the list of structures you might wanna see. If you have a wish list, if there's something that you have always thought was a little bit difficult to wrap your brain around, the foot, I could study the foot in a book and I could tell you all of the muscles and tendons and ligaments and bones, but I couldn't get the foot. I wasn't really good with the foot until I saw it in three dimensions and could actually grok the different layers of it. Now, I love the foot. 
And you heard that right. She said grok. Okay, she's grokking it. All right. Mental prep. We suggest self-regular check-ins beforehand. Whatever suits you most. That can be silent reflection, meditation, counseling, journaling, talking with a friend, or even just keeping an open mind. Anything you want to add on this, Tanya? Open mind and curiosity is the two mm -hmm. key things for me. Bring your curiosity with you. Yeah, absolutely. And you get what you give for this. The more thought process you put into it, the more you want to see different things, the more you're going to take out of it as well. So absolutely fantastic. All right. You may surprise yourself by your feelings. And this is something that we see very different every year that we do these things. So I don't know if you want to add a little bit more to that specifically. Some people really think that they're going to have a hard time. And some people think they're going to be super excited and it'll be really easy. And sometimes you're right. Other times you can be mistaken in either direction. You can think this is going to be a piece of cake and maybe you struggle more than you thought, or you think this is going to be so hard and you didn't have the hardness and you're wondering why is there something wrong with me? Why is this so easy? Why did I like this so much? All the feelings are good. All the feelings are valid. Uh, again, open mind and curiosity. Be curious about yourself. What are you experiencing? Maybe why? Do the why later because you won't have time <laughs> for that in the actual cadaver lab but those things will be helpful for you. Yeah, absolutely. Another couple of things I would say, come in fresh. So if you are out partying or enjoying some fireworks and stuff like that, it definitely takes away from the overall experience. Be kind to yourself and others. You have no idea what other people are going through. Your experience is your own, but it can be influenced by the positivity and negativity of those around you. So please make sure that you are cognizant of what other people might be feeling and going through. And any of feelings of apprehension are usually only there at the very start for just the littlest bit. And once you start moving around, get doing, getting to do a little few things or palpating or asking questions and that curiosity comes out, then you're going to see it goes a lot better for you. Yeah, it's the unknown. The unknown is always. Yeah. And that's, again, why I would encourage you just go onto YouTube and just watch a cadaver video or two and just see what it's all about. Now, something else that we do have to bring up is reactions during the process or even later. It might be a couple of weeks later, a couple of months later, and you're reflecting on the process or thinking about it. And you might have an interaction with a spouse or somebody else where maybe it's negative or positive either way, but you're trying to think as you're processing this cadaver dissection uh, well, process here, you might be thinking, why did I react that way? And that's something that we see sometimes with people. So not super common, but just something for you to be aware of. It might ripple out into, the, into your life in a way that you're, again, not expecting. And you might not even be thinking about it. You just might uh, feel something a week down the road, a month down the road, a year down the road. Uh, and it might actually have been initiated <laughs> yeah, sure. by, by the lab experience. Yeah. But again, I just want to stress this. This is a truly life-changing process. So the fact that you get to do this, it is a real privilege and it is, it does make us better doctors, therapists, students, whatever it is. We're all students of life. So we're always learning every time we do this. I always learn something new. There's something new every time we run through this stuff. So, and in fact, your questions even make it better as well. So, okay. All right. How you might people, how you might people, how you might feel. Most people are okay through this process and have a strong desire to return in the future. Absolutely. Okay. Because what you see on one donor, you might not see on the next one or other variations and everything like that. Some people, especially when they first start, can feel a little bit numb to their surroundings. They haven't seen a donor before. It's a foreign process for them. Uh, both the sights and smell and bombing fluid can be difficult for some people, although we've done we've been in multiple labs and the last two that we are working in right now have had excellent air quality. So even that we've noticed that it's not really been an issue at all. But there's a great analogy that Tanya has that I love. Some people will ask if they haven't been in the lab, if the embalming fluid is uh, really a, a problem or how bad it is. Uh, I like to think of it like the chlorine in a pool. I don't enjoy the smell of chlorine in a public pool, but I love swimming. So for me, it's very similar. I don't love the smell of the, of the lab uh, always, but I love being in it because I learn all kinds of fun things. Yeah. Okay. The other thing that might come up there for people during the session is there'll be analogies to food. Oh, this looks like steak. Oh, this looks like whatever, right? Now we try to avoid that. It's not the end of the world if somebody says something like that, but realize when you are looking at meat, we are meat. Like it is a common analogy to use right there. It's yeah. pretty unavoidable to talk, not to talk about food at some point because the, it's just so obvious, the layers and the textures and they're just unavoidable comparisons. So don't get freaked out. It's not like you're never going to enjoy turkey supper ever again. It'll be fine. You'll be <laughs> fine. Don't get mad at somebody else, but talking about tangerines or something, it'll be fine. You'll be fine. 
Yeah, absolutely. And now the next thing is grieving. Please be aware of this. Now I can remember this was probably about, well, it's been about 15 years ago right now. We actually had one student come in and she hadn't seen a dead body since she had to identify her own brother as at, at a morgue basically. And so it became a very emotionally triggering response for her getting her back in the lab. In these processes, realize it is your normal response to go through something like that. And we are here to support you through that. It's extremely rare that we actually see that, but that would be one of the key things to say. If you've yeah. had a friend or family member who's recently died and it's and it, you're still processing that, this can be more challenging than it would be if you hadn't. But just because something is hard doesn't mean it's bad. And I've seen people who start with tears and grieving ending up with a deep peacefulness and big broad smiles. So mm -hmm. this can be a really great experience for folks who are grieving, but lean on some support, get some uh, counseling, uh, journaling, doing all those good things that we talked about with the self-care, but it, that might be a good time to engage somebody else, uh, somebody who has some actual professional skills to help you through it. And that's something we've seen almost across the board. Most people come in and they start to blossom basically as the process develops. They just become so much more intrigued, integrated into the process. And that just means better outcomes for you as a physician or therapist in the future and ultimately the people that you work with. So that's your ultimate goal here. All right. So next thing that we're going to get into is going to be self-care. And this is absolutely crucial. So these, ex these ex sessions can be quite exciting, which can be very mentally and emotionally draining for people. We will often tell you to take regular breaks. You need to take regular breaks, change your state. Some people just, once they get in, they just don't want to leave. And it's like, we're dragging them out of there. Okay. But plan some self-care time. So some alone time, some social time, walking, meditation, journaling, those will be of benefit for you. I don't know if you want to add more to this, Tom. If you're only in for a uh, pro section, then it won't be as important for you to take these breaks. But if you're doing an actual dissection, it's a longer period. There's more stuff going on and it's more critical for you to keep yourself sharp and fresh and not burn yourself out so that you are empty before the uh, period of time for the for the course is over. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see the image here on the slide. Basically, this is me taking people through some kind of yoga stretching routines right here. This can be a nice way to loosen up your body and get ready for the process you're about to go through for the day or in the middle of the day as well. Now, the other thing to realize in this process as part of the self-care is you are now an ambassador to this process. So that means you are representing cadaver dissection experiences to your patients and general public. And there are a couple of key things that we have to watch. Number one, especially when you're first through this process, you are going to be very excited and likely, yeah. Doc, do you remember the time we pulled a brain out of that person's head and it was oh just so gosh. amazing? Okay. And I'm in a restaurant. And yeah. And there's like 20 people, 20 people in your near vicinity. You definitely have to be aware of that. Colin, you want to add more on that? You can use more clinical language. You can maintain a little bit of a composure if there and and keep your voice down if there's people in proximity who might not quite understand your enthusiasm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's that's be that ambassador, be a good representative of what we're doing, and be cognizant of how other people might react because a lot of people haven't spent as much time with the body studying it as we have. So be aware of that when you're talking in the general public domain areas. All right. So a couple of thing about a couple of things about our educational donors. They have given their bodies to us as an educational gift, and it's an autonomous decision supported by their families. I have my body ready to donate. This is one of the best things that I think you can do. And Tony's got another great analogy that she uses as the donor house. I love this one. Some people are apprehensive first coming into the lab because they think there's a person on the table. They think that there's a dead person. I don't think of it that way. I'm a person. You're I'm a person. A person. Yeah. You're a person. Once the person has left the body, it's like uh, an empty, empty vessel. And if I built a house from the foundations on up from scratch all by myself, uh, then if I move out of the house, it's just an empty house. And the body's exactly that. I grew this entire thing from two cells all by myself. I don't remember doing it, but I did <laughs> a pretty amazing job. And when I move out, I'm not there anymore. I'm not the person. I'm just uh, a cadaver. I'm the empty house. And so these people have invited us to explore their houses, see what they built, see what's different, how they've customized it, what's what went wrong maybe. And that is our pleasure. We're like little archeologists going in and, and 
uncovering all of the, the hidden secrets. Yeah. And again, what is the best thing that we can do for this gift is to honor this experience and be that respectful ambassador for our donors and ultimately all the people we treat in the future. I'm always bringing this back because it's not just about identification of structures like most people think of gross anatomy as. What we're looking for here is long-term benefits for the ultimate outcomes for the people that we see and treat in our own practices or even our own educational experience. You don't go wrong with education. How can your exploration of the, of the empty house make you a better practitioner? Absolutely. Fantastic. All right. So questions and comments. This is a safe place. There is no wrong questions to ask. If you forget a basic, simple, like you forget that, oh, this is where the ulna is. That is no problem. Okay. If you want to ask more in-depth questions, we are there to help facilitate that process for you. And you should enjoy this amazing educational process and this educational gift. Anything else you want to add on that? It's just the questions really make the difference right here. So come in fresh and ready to ask questions. And what we are going to be doing is opening a book of learning. So our dissection style is showing you multiple layers, relating it cl to clinical relevance, and ultimately maybe even pathologies and variations in anatomy that we can actually use, again, for the ultimate outcomes for our patients and clients that we see in real practice. Education, empowerment, exercise, actions, even nutrition we can talk about through all this process, all of it makes a difference for the best outcomes for our people. And that's all that I really have to say. Come to the lab. All have right. a great time. You will have a great time. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in the lab.